As we go through this door, we're going to turn to the right and we're going to along the, the drain and welcome the system. some background about the system. Uh, it was built in 1926 as an underground drinking water reservoir for the city of Houston. Uh, the engineer behind the project was W.R. Holloway out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. He's an engineer of some note during his time period, and there is a Wikipedia page that talks about him and some of his other projects. The construction was done by the uh, Standard Construction Company of Houston. Uh, they're still located here. They go by their family name now, which is Fretz. And the Fretz Construction Company was very generous provided us with blueprints and drawings and some additional information so we'd know more about the system. It took them 95 days to build this facility uh, and it turned 90 years old in August of this year. It took them 6,000 cubic yards of concrete to build and over 800,000 pounds of reinforcing steel. Half of that steel went into the ceiling alone. The ceiling is 10 inches thick. The exterior wall started 8 inches thick at the top. The taper out to 18 inches thick at the base. The space itself is 87,500 square feet. That's about a football field and a half, or right at two acres. And it would hold a volume of 15 million gallons of water. There are 221 columns in the space. 165 of those standing out in the water were a full 25 feet tall. And the water that filled this originally came in from the west side, and it came in from well fields. And then the floor slopes gently from that side over to this corner where it went out to, uh, out to the pump station. All right, if you'll follow me, we'll get started on the tour. So to understand, understand what we did in the system, we'd like to go back and talk about the water history of the city of Houston. The city of Houston was founded in 1836 by the Allen Brothers. They sent information around the world talking about the abundant resources Houston had to offer. Uh, one of those resources was water, the bubble bio. And they used that for household chores and industrial purposes and for drinking. And I'm sure as you came up here today, you look out the bottom of the box, I would like to have a glass of that. Uh, it is drinkable water, it's a little better quality back in those days, but it's also a very silty bottle, which means you have to put it into a container and let that silt settle to the bottom. It's also very brackish, which means it doesn't taste good. So even back in those days, they would supplement their drinking water by uh, having water brought in, by uh, having collecting water from uh, grain, uh, taking shallow wells. Uh, and those who could afford it would actually have water brought in by barrel and stagecoaches stage or wagons. Uh, one of the biggest issues we had in the early days was fighting fires, having enough water and water pressure to be so effective. And they hadn't really dealt with that issue completely. But in 1878, we had the Market Center fire. You know where Market Square is today? That's where that was. And it consumed the entire mercantile district and city hall. So they decided they needed to act a little more quickly. So they went to uh, New York later that year and brought back with them four gentlemen who founded the private firm, the Houston Waterworks Company. And the first thing they did was to build a steam-powered pump station. And that opened in 1879. And it allowed them to pump uh, two million gallons of water per day. And if you know where the aquarium is downtown, that's where that was located. The very next year, they had another massive fire. They were able to put it out very quickly, so the system worked well for them. But the city was also rapidly growing. And as it was, they needed to find additional sources of water. And in 1886, they located artesian water, 180 feet below the city in an aquifer. Began pumping that up, used for drinking water. Well, as the city continued to grow, the waterworks company started sneaking some of the biowater back into the drinking system. And you started to get noticed immediately. They began to complain about the color, taste, and smell of the water. The waterworks held, the company held with their story that they were only using the artesian water for drinking. Well, there are several stories about how they got caught. Our favorite one comes from 1903, when the waters of the women's ward of the downtown police station suddenly stopped flowing. When they went down to find out what was going on, they discovered the pipes were clogged by a three-foot dead eel. Eels don't live in artesian water 180 feet below the city. Uh, so at this point, everyone knew they were lying. 
Uh, it was so important of a case, though, that it did actually go to the U.S. Supreme Court. And in 1904, they ruled that the city of Houston could no longer use bio water for any purpose, including fighting fires. As a result of that, we terminated the contract with them. And in 1906, under the direction of our mayor at the time, H. Baldwin Rice, uh, uh, we purchased the waterworks. It's been a municipal function ever since. So we've stopped here so you can see one of our original site features. This is one of our maintenance hatches. There are four of these, one on, on each wall. And originally, that would be the only way you could come into the cistern. So if there was a maintenance problem, they would drain all of the water in here out. And then the maintenance worker would pop that 50-pound hatch and start down this ladder with his tools and his uh, uh, flashlight because there's no additional light in here for them. Now, the water that was in here had come from wells. So they had a lot of silt and sediment with it. So that silt and sediment would be coating this ladder as he was coming down. So we had to do that very carefully. When he got to the bottom, we didn't have this nice walkway that we have today. He had a two-foot ledge. And it was covered in that wet silt and sediment, and it didn't have a rail of it. So he had to very carefully get his feet planted there, and then start down the decline over to where the staircase is. Then he could use that to go the rest of the way down into the cistern and do whatever maintenance work they needed to do. Fortunately, there wasn't a lot of maintenance work to do, but they did have to be very careful every time they came down here with one misstep and they could slide into the little bit of water that might have been left at the bottom. So now it's uh, 1906, the water system is uh, under the city of Houston. They begin to look at what they need to do to improve and expand the system. The biggest issue they have over the next couple of decades is sanitation of the water. Uh, the water, like I mentioned, was coming in here from the well fields. They weren't doing anything to filter it or trip it or work in the distance of the storage. But at the same time, the city was very rapidly growing. As a matter of fact, by the time we get to 1925, we were at the point of pumping 20 million gallons of water a day for the city. That's why in 1926, they built this 15 million gallon underground drinking water reservoir. That allowed them to keep about a day's worth of water in here. So if there was a problem anywhere else in the system, they had this water in reserve. But they still hadn't dealt with that um, sanitation issue. When in 1929, we had a massive flood. The water in the bottom usually comes out of its banks at about 21 or 22 feet in the downtown area. That flood was 54 feet. It put 300 blocks of downtown underwater, including the waterworks, which was completely submerged by 20 feet. So they decided they needed to act a little more quickly on this, so they contacted the uh, private well owners and asked to borrow the water or had them turn the water from their wells into the public system, which they gladly did. The only problem is that water uh, was intended for industrial purposes and for irrigation, not for drinking. Well, this causes a cross-contamination problem. And it's so bad that the, uh, the city health department has to send out notices to everyone. They have to boil their water before they can drink it. And that went on for several years. In the meantime, they also contacted the public schools. That's the part of the coordination of what they use for the swimming pools. And if you know, if you uh, take some cold water, you know how effective that was. Well, by 1929, they had actually come up with a number of recommendations they could use to completely fix the system. They just hadn't uh, chosen to use the money in that, in that way yet. They were still working on the expansion. And with this crisis, they begin spending that money on these recommendations. And by 1933, they reach all of them. And they receive full certification from the U.S. government, meaning they have a system that is closed and free from sanitation or contamination problems and has a good quality of drinking water. We've actually held the highest quality of drinking water every year since 1933. So with that problem now solved, we begin to look 